Let the master set you free. Let the master bring his peace to you. He ain't asking you to live this thing. He's asking you to trust him so he can show you how to. If you're going to walk in what I teach, you have got to make this your foundation. How Jesus loves the fall. That is your life. These are some of the most astounding words. Watch it. As he is, so are we. Welcome again to Jesus This Answer Ministries broadcast. I'm Pastor Robert Scales, and I'm just telling you all, I pray the Lord is absolutely blessing you. And I tell you, you need to call your friends, tell them to tune in today, because I'm getting ready to teach up. Uh, I'm teaching on what do you live by? And it's just amazing. Uh, the stuff that that people live by who associate themselves with Christ. Christ is supposed to make us what we are, not we go try to make Jesus what we are. And so Jesus uh, wrote and spoke through the Apostle Paul by the Holy Spirit in Romans 1.17. We've been using this as a text. For therein is the righteous of God revealed from faith to faith. It is evident the just shall live by faith. And faith is Jesus, and Jesus is faith. And when you live by Jesus, <laughs> you have to live by hearing Jesus, believing and speaking, and doing what Jesus tells you to do. One thing about the Lord Jesus is he kills all questions. This, this is that's one way you can tell. When you're not in Jesus, because you you got questions. And then when, when you hear Jesus, it's always to do something. You'll never hear Jesus and have to come up, uh, you know, with a question. He gives answers and power. So we always going to live by Jesus. And we know that uh, Jesus gave us in his teachings in Matthew 7, 24 and Luke 6, 47, Jesus said, whosoever cometh to me, heareth my sayings and doeth them. Jesus said, I'll show you to whom he's like. And so then he said, whoever come and hear my sayings and doeth them not. He said, I'm going to show you who that person like. And so one house is on the rock and the storm hits your obedience to hear Jesus believe and speak, do what he say. The other one heard Jesus, didn't do what he say. Then speak what he said. Therefore, that was ruined, and, and you, you're just miserable. You're unhappy. Now, what what I want to go to today, I believe the Lord has it's, it's led me, is to show you and young people, you know, they got so many shows on TV. There's so many channels, you can't even find out everything on no more. And we, we as Christians have to guard ourselves. You know, I'm not going to watch no Victoria's Secrets. Um, I won't even watch the American pageant. Uh, Miss America, University. This some of the ways they dress. I, praise the Lord. And, uh, but, but too many believers you know, don't even care. They, they don't care how they dress, how short they dresses are. And, uh, you know, and then you get believers and say, well, I just don't think that matter. What, what do you mean? You you are contributing to a man lusting and you don't believe the Lord's going to hold you accountable for that? We had a lady came to church and she's an older woman. Her dress was so short I don't know what she trying to look that cute for. And you say, as you get older, you get a little bit more sense because you don't have nobody impressed like that no more. You already love. And um, your husband, I look forward to seeing you in the bedroom. He ought not be trying to see you naked out. And so there, there has to be some balance in the way that Christian women and men conduct ourselves. Let me go in, uh, 
in in first Corinthians chapter 13 I'm sorry chapter 15 verse 33 um be not deceived and so what do you live by do you live by being deceived Evil communications corrupt good manners. And most, most Christians don't even know this. Listen to the worldly music. Do you live by that? Oh, no, I don't, I don't live by it. I just listen to it. Well, wait a minute. How in the world are you going to listen to that and don't live by it? The scriptures tell you be not deceived about it. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not. <laughs> the Bible says that we're sinning when we allow evil communications to come to us and we don't do nothing about it. And some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. So he was telling the Corinthians to Christians that this is a shame. For you to lack, uh, uh, and, and this is what people lack, saints. This, this, this is what they lack. They lack the presence of God. It's something about God's presence that makes people holy. I'm telling you, it's, 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 it's the presence of God. And so let me read you this. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 33. Listen to this. Do not be so deceived and misled. Evil companionship. <laughs> my, my son uh, is graduating, getting his master's. And one of the things I taught him, he's still a virgin, 23 years old. And uh, hadn't tried drugs or drink and never will. How do you know? See, you you don't you you don't walk with the Lord to even ask me that. Because people walk with the Lord, they know why he don't do that. And because you don't walk with the Lord, you don't know that I know he ain't done that. See, you don't know. And the the the, the thing that I taught him his whole life growing up is who he's gonna let influence him. And that he was a leader, not a follower. He follows the Lord, follows his daddy. But when it comes to his peers, he's not a, a follower. He's a leader. And, and I taught him some of the things the Lord taught me, that evil communications corrupt good men. Now let me read you this in the Amplified now. Be not, do not be so deceived and misled. Evil companionship. They're the people in church. They could be the, the one that's hindering you and holding you back. Evil companionships, communion, associations, corrupt and deprive good manners and morals and character. <laughs> you should make sure when, when you around people that ain't right that you are bringing it all to them. You're not letting them bring you they ways that's not from Jesus to you. Amen. That's amen anyway. Um, and so I taught my son and I teach the saints, the young people at church. If you listen to worldly music, you never gonna walk with God. Well, what do you live by? See, and, and so the devil is so crafty he wants you to serve him and call it God. You ain't gonna call it Jesus. They, they won't do that, but they'll say it's God. So he wants you, they, they, they told my son this in school. He, he, he told him, they came and asked him to come to a party. And, and he said, no, I, I'm, I'm gonna stay in. I'm going to church in the morning. 
and I, I, I'm not going. I don't, I don't want to go to the party. And then this is what the guy told him. And it was the devil. You can do both of them. You can go to the party and still go to church in the morning. See, this is what he would do. Thinking and deceived that you can serve two masters. So people <laughs> are deceived. Listen to this. If my son had went to a party and came to church, he wouldn't have been serving the Lord. He wouldn't have been serving the Lord. And so I had to teach him how to be single-minded one way. And he had beer pulled on him and reefer blowed in his face. That's amazing. You don't want to get high by yourself. You have to do all that to somebody who don't want to get high. They like got destroyed. And, and, and they want to destroy your life with that junk. And so, saints, I'm telling you to teach your children and yourself that what you let feed you, what you see and hear every day is going to be what influences your life. It's true. Let me read you this in Amplified. Do not be so deceived and misled. Evil companionships, communion, associations, corrupt and deprived good manners and morals and character. Awake from your drunkard stupor and return to sober sense and your right minds. He's talking to Christians. And seeing no more. For some of you have not the knowledge of God. You are utterly and willfully and disgracefully ignorant and continue to be so lacking the sense of God's presence and all true knowledge of him. I say this to your shame. And so this is, this is what guarding your life will do. It will protect the anointing. It will protect the presence of God. If you don't walk in the presence of God, you are going to live in really serving the devil and you're going to call this stuff God. Wow. Let me show it to you <laughs> in, in uh, Matthew 6, 24. Uh, Jesus said this out of his lips. And, and it's true. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hold to the one, uh, he, will, he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. Now, here's what the devil, what, what do you live by? Are you deceived that, well, I, I listen to Christian music, but I got to have my other music too. And the devil really got you serving him. You don't even know. Oh, ain't nobody perfect. You, you, ain't nothing wrong with listening to a little worldly music. And um, saints, you can't serve two masters. And, and what you serve, you're telling the other one you hate it. And what you serve, you're telling it you love it. Every time in your life. And so the devil wanted my son to go to the party and come to church where he would still talk about God. Still lie and say he a Christian and really be serving the devil. And it's the same way with worldly music. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 14. It's the same thing. Uh, Paul is speaking here about idolatry. And a lot of people don't know where, listen to worldly music, it's idolatry. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as the wise men, judge you what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless is not the communion of the blood of Christ. I mean, you know, if you if you know people say, well, we should listen, you shouldn't play instruments or music in church. Well, why you do it at home? I mean, man, you know, 
if, if, if I can't live this in church, I sure ain't gonna live it at home. And if it ain't right at church, it ought not be right at home. How, how could you have a double standard? One way at church, another way at home. Shouldn't you live the same way every day? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread and one body, we all partakers of that one bread. Behold, Israel after the flesh are not they which either the sacrifices partake of the altar? What say I then that the idol is anything or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils. It's a, a lady that sings, and, and listen, they so bold. She know all over the world. And she had the nerve to tell us in an interview, oh, I got, a, I got a spirit that comes in me and takes over me when I don't even know what I'm doing. How in the world I'm going to let my child listen to you? And you got a spirit. And you chanting a spirit in you and then you want a, 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 a Christian uh, children to listen to you? Oh, Lord, gee, we ain't that stupid, I know. Verse 20. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. They don't do it to God. They don't do it through Jesus. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. You cannot drink, 1 Corinthians 10, 24, 21, 21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. There are so many people who go to church who say they're saved and they really are children of the devil. They drink of the devil's cup and then come to church and try to drink of the Lord's cup. And and you, you can't fellowship with both of them. See? So you, you have to watch what you watch. It's garbage. It's worldly. It's going to keep you over in the realm where Satan is and not where the Holy Spirit is. And, um, and we, we need more teaching on this to, 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 to expose darkness in the lives of people. Amen. Now, let me, let me get ready to quote in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Be, not, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Now, this don't mean we, we don't go around <laughs> um, uh, other people. I do. I love people. But fellowshipping is when they're coming and having influence in your life. What fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? Listen, Jesus and the devil never hooked up. God and the devil is not going to hook up. They're not going to sit down and have lunch together. But God wants us to have lunch with people who are not right because we're ministering to bring them to Christ. What commune have light with darkness? What concord have Christ with Malayah? Who? What do you live by every day? Who's really controlling you? Wake up, saints. Awake to righteousness. Don't be ignorant of God's presence. That, that God's presence is what will keep us. Jesus said, hold on your spot right there. Jesus said in John 8, chapter 8, verse 51, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
if a man keep my saying, I'll not do the best he can. He shall never see death. So I used to always wonder, you know, man, you will never die if you keep Jesus saying, but that's not what he's saying. <laughs> he, he, he's saying in the Greek, you will never be separated from his presence, his blessed influence. When you obey Jesus, you will never be separated from his blessed influence. That is what's going to keep you from going back to what you used to do. It's, and then a lot of people are trying to get some kind of information or prayer. But the person is going to have to do something after they get the prayer. So that they can keep Jesus' blessed influence. So then, what could court have Christ with Baleo? 2 Corinthians 6.15 what part of he that believeth with an infidel, infidel is unbelief. What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? We, we, we should have, uh, think about this for a minute. We should not have agreements with, the, with, with idols. We shouldn't have agreement with worldly music and worldly stuff on TV. Girls and dancing and come on, saints. Uh, they, don't, they don't care how they want you to look at their panties. They want you to see their breasts. They, they get a gratification to want men to lust after them. And they drag a, a lot of men, some men, not all of them, very few, who say they are believers. In that. Yeah. They say, listen, if you'll come and bow down and worship the devil, we'll give you some money. If you'll bow down, now listen, don't you come against homosexuality? Don't you be reading no Bible to us? I told everybody last week, y'all need to read Romans chapter 1. Every, from the president on down, everybody need to read Romans chapter 1. It's just too clear in the Bible. And Christians should not have an agreement with idols. The temple, we are the temple of God. For you are the temple of the living God, and God has said, I'll dwell in him. I'll walk in them. I'll be their God, and they'll be my people. Now look what the Lord said. Come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord. So Jesus is, is, what do you live by? Are you living by Jesus causing you to live a different life than people around you? Come out from among them. And, and one of the things <laughs> that in closing today that I want to teach to the young people that's watching, you're going to, and I taught my son this, you're going to have to quit being ashamed that you're a virgin. You're going to have to have pride in that and, and understand that ain't nothing wrong with you. There's something wrong with them out there fornicating and having sex. It's not nothing wrong with you. And the devil will make people in the world try to make you feel bad and look bad because they live in sin. Amen. And so come out from among them, their ways, their behaviors. I know you're in school with them. I know it's all around you. But I got some good news for y'all. Greater is he Jesus that's in you than he that is in the world? Listen, no matter what pressure is on you, come out from among them. Be separate. Touch not the unclean thing. God said, I'll receive you. Uh, you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord. God said, I'll be a father to you. I'll look after you. I'll take care of you. I'll provide for you. I'll be there for you.
If you'll come out from among them, be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing. <laughs> and saints, this all goes back to not being ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it's the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. You be encouraged today. And don't you be ashamed because you ain't living like everybody else. You let the Lord be your strength every day. Hallelujah. I want to make available to you. What do you live by? What? Every day, what do you live by? You live by the word? You live by their standards? Or you live by Jesus' teachings? On the screen is our address. And I've made this uh, part one and part two. It's usually six months. But this week, it's a special. You'll get both of them for $40 and also give you a free copy of, of my book. We'll send these right out to you. Make your checks and money orders to Jesus. It's Answer Ministries, Post Office Box 292112, Nashville, Tennessee, 37229. Saints, these will change your life. They will teach you how to live by true faith. Live by Jesus. And so order them today. Also, you can go to robberscaleministry.org and order these online. They will bless your life. So order them today, and we'll get them right out to you. $40 special. Man, I'm telling you, that's a, that's a deal to get part one and part two. Also, I want to invite you all. Jesus has a church. A church that's alive. It's work to drive. And so uh, our service times, 9 o'clock Sunday school, 10 o'clock regular service. 7 o'clock p.m. on Thursdays. And also, we stream our services live. So you can, you can tune in on, on your iPad or your phone or uh, your computer and check check out the services. Oh, it's exciting what God is doing. It's, it's just amazing. We had a young man there that had, had, a, had, had tore his groin and he broke the bone and tore the ligament in it. And, and he came to church and Jesus healed him and put it all back together. And we have the, 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 the x-rays where, where this happened. And the doctors told him it had been a miracle. Hallelujah. And so come. Amen. You'll be blessed. I want to thank my friends and partners. Thank you so much for helping me get the gospel out. And we, we just, uh, I love you. I pray for you all. Thank you all for taking time. Right? Let me know how the broadcast has been a blessing to you. Amen. It encourages me and blesses me. And while I'm teaching through this TV, it's really touching people's lives. Well, my time's up today. My prayer for you is that you will know the love of Christ that passes knowledge and be filled with all the fullness of God. From Jesus and some ministry, I'm Pastor Robert Scales. Remember, as Christ loved you on the cross, go live his love and have a blessed day today. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye-bye.